Last week, we talked about the foundational footwork of ice climbing. Today, we're talking about swinging ice tools efficiently and putting together the full sequence of basic ice climbing movements. Hi there, everyone. I'm Jason. In all but the most extreme forms of climbing, your feet push you up the mountain, whereas your hands and arms provide balance and keep you connected to the surface. Well, that was never more true than with ice climbing. We swing these sharp and serrated ice tools overhead to ensure we have a series of handholds as we move our way up. And as you'll see, we need to be very confident in those holds that were created. Last week was all about good foot placements on ice. So today we add in the ice tool swings and get the full sequence of movement. First, let's talk about swinging our ice tools. It is very easy to get pumped out arms when ice climbing. So the motion we want is all about efficiency. We want the tool to do the work. So we are trying to generate a whip-like motion of the tool where we just get the tool started and then its momentum does the work for us. The way we get that whip is by initiating the swing from the elbow and then flicking the wrist. For this to work, we need to both allow the tool to rotate in an arc and make sure that the arc is in a single plane. For the arc to happen, we need the right grip, and that comes down to having the hand position that puts the inside palm knuckles more on the side of your tool rather than in front. If our hand is wrapped too far in front, we can't flick our wrist effectively. Then we also need a light touch. If we squeeze too hard, again, that will inhibit that wrist flick. To allow both the lighter grip and the correct hand position, many ice climbers will actually leave their index finger off the tool when swinging, allowing the tool to rotate freely in its arc. Now, to stay in the correct single plane, we need to keep our elbow aligned with our shoulder. If the elbow comes wide, we are adding planes, which increases effort and reduces accuracy. Accuracy, huh? Well, accuracy towards what? We need to make sure that we're swinging into concavities or indentations in the ice. If we swing at edges or bulges, we are more likely to shear the ice off. Finally, we want to move our elbow high, but not straight up, thus reducing the amount of swings we need to take on the climb by reaching some, but not being so stretched out that we can't generate a good swing or eye our desired placement. What we're hoping to achieve are solid thunk sounds as opposed to rattling sounds, lack of shattering ice, no subsurface cracks weakening the ice around the placement, and a tool that doesn't wobble. We can now get into the movement sequence. We talked about hanging on the tool for getting good kicks in the last video. So we produce that hang by keeping a straight arm and sitting the hips down and away from the ice. Now we're free to kick one foot and then the other while maintaining that hang. Ideal foot placements will be wider than your hips, generating a good base for the next swing, but terrain features may dictate. Once both feet are set, we stand up. Our legs are doing the heavy work. Our arms are just swinging tools and hanging off of them. We aren't doing pull-ups. Keeping our first tool now in lock-off position with our hand near our armpit, we have moved our hips close to the ice and have arched our back. This creates room for our next swing. So now swing the next tool. We hang again, kick one foot and then the other without breaking from our hang, and then stand up and repeat. That's the basic movement sequence on ice, utilizing the kicks we talked about last week and the swings we just described today. Ice is a fickle medium and requires both caution and technique. But if you are an aspiring alpine climber, It is a very necessary skill for either seasons or altitudes where snow and ice become common. Getting good at it will open up a world of adventures for you. Thanks for coming to the end of this video. Please hit that like button and please do ring that bell and subscribe. Check out our website at shortguysbetaworks.com to find gear lists, all of our videos, and additional thoughts and information. Do you prefer climbing on rock, snow, or ice? Maybe all three. Please let us know in the comments. We'll see you again next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.